Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Mini a True Note, and welcome to Columni. One of well, this is actually one of the very early sort of games that I'm going to show off to you. Like normally, I like a game to like get somewhere before I show it off. I've said that before. Like uh, when I kind of show off games that are in their early stages, there needs to be a really solid foundation. This one has been on my radar since last September, in fact, when I first kind of saw some of the first kind of like the screenshots and the footage that was coming out of it. But very, very recently indeed, actually the devs were kind enough to send me the first playable demo of Columni, which as you can probably tell from looking at the little controls there, is mainly like a point and click, kind of like a really old school point and click adventure game. But there's a couple of reasons I wanted to pay attention to this one in particular. Let's just kind of click to get going. And the first one is, it's really, really, really pretty. I mean, the look at that. You see, if you're going to do a point and click adventure game that's like a 2D point and click adventure game, do it properly. Do proper, like, 3D. Do little kind of... I don't know if that deck could probably kind of fake God rays. But my goodness, is it rather pretty. This lovely silhouette style. And also, um, make it a sci-fi steampunk post-apocalypse thing. Because when you've got a sci-fi steampunk post-apocalypse thing, yeah, okay, yeah, you got my attention. I like that aesthetic. It's very, very pretty indeed. And I've got some sort of mysterious backpack that just produces smoke. So yeah, we've just got this, this really pretty, pretty little demo. I will say, and I will say this right now, this is in fact, yeah, the first demo. This game, I believe, is about to go on its Kickstarter. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I'll mention that again at the end. But yeah, this is a really early game. But like, games this early when they're only just entering Kickstarter, I don't like show off unless they're, I think they're kind of interesting and cool. And this is so gorgeous, I just kind of wanted to play anyway because I've been paying attention to this one for a while. So, hover over things and things you can interact with kind of hover red. You can kind of right click to get a view on what they are. So, Steve is my ex-colleague. He's a nice, simple guy. Oh, we've got the kind of the factory gates up here. And that is Ty Winston's Edible Compound Processing Plant. Or if we head over here instead, we have got ourselves a bored girl. And that cigarette is never ending. <laughs> the cigarette is never ending. So of course, that's her idle animation. She just kind of says, oh, she's got a backpack too. We can talk about backpacks. Let's go up to her. Go up to her. We can totally like have a conversation about backpacks. Waiting for someone. Why don't you join the protest? What a lousy party. Just looking. Waiting for someone by any chance? Waiting for someone? Maybe. And anything else I can get out of you? Yeah, why don't you uh, join the protest? And why don't you? And... I will, or maybe I'm not part of the Labour Yeah, maybe I'm not part of the Labour Union. I'm, I may well not be, and neither am I. Good point. <laughs> I don't think she wants to talk to me. And uh, what a lousy... Yeah, let's try this approach. What a lousy party, eh? And all parties are lousy. They wanted to believe there's a real difference between them, but they're all the same. Except the ones with the free grog, or there's a different kind of party in you. Oh! There's a party in my pants and you're invited! Please don't. The gate is locked, so we can't open that yet. Maybe we'll be able to open that in time. And then we've got Steve. Let's chat to Steve. They took a jab, says Steve. Dear, oh dear, I'm sorry, Steve. So, uh, what's actually written on your sign? Because I can't see because it's a silhouette. What's actually written on your sign, Steve? I can't tell. It's kind of dark here. Okay, I like this game even more. Now I know it's clearly got a bit of a sense of humour to it. That's good. Uh, that's okay. It's still blank, actually. That girl over there tried to convince me to write down some really weird lines from her book of revolutionary poetry on it. Uh, I'll rather wait for the president of the Labour Union to come back. He always has good ideas. <laughs> oh, dear. I'll talk to her about... Oh, good. You've given me an in with the girl over there. Beautiful. I'll talk to her about that. Okay. Thank you, Steve. You've just given me an in with the... The girl who may or may not be hot over here, I don't know, because she's kind of a silhouette. But she's got a backpack. Talk about backpacks. Heard you into revolutionary poetry. Hey, wanna overthrow some government together later today? Uh, yeah, I heard you into revolutionary poetry. I totally want to hear that. Who told you that, Steve? Who's that? Hardworking guy who just lost his job because of useless parasites. Like, it's not her fault. Steve! Good old Steve. Steve. Who's Steve? Um, well, I can't say a hard-working guy who lost a job because of useless parasites. It's like, you and your kind? Why am I being that rude? Why would I be that rude to her? Maybe, no, no, forget that. Forget that. So, so Steve said, yeah, hey, do you want to overthrow some governments together later, bunny chance? Uh, flattered, I'm already in a committed revolutionary movement. Of course you are. And before you ask, no, I'm not into one-night riots. My character really is a Did he just look at the camera and, like, wink? That's beautiful. 
Never mind, excuse me, never mind. I feel like that girl's not interested in me just yet. Thanks, Steve, you did try and help, but uh, didn't work out in the end. Anything else from you, Steve? And if you lack gas, better move your ass. That's nice rhymes, well done. My wife says they suck. Oh, Steve, she also says I suck. I do suck. You lost your job too, but it's not just a big deal for you. As a certified mechanic, you can apply for that government job in Lower Columni. Ah... Okay, this is where we are, by the way. So, like, the setup for the world, like, above us, there's effectively Columbia from Bioshock Infinite. That's Deus. And then underneath that is the Machina, the massive technological, horrifying machine that feeds resources and everything that Deus needs to survive. And Deus is held up by big columns, the Columni. So we literally live in the Machina. Uh, so, yeah, Deus Ex Machina is a thing. It's quite good. I quite liked it. It's a very nice, evocative setting for a game in the shadows under the kind of literally in the shadows, among the machinery that feeds the glorious master race above. But, you know, we live literally in their shadows. It's quite good. Tell me about that government job. This sounds like an in for something. And she, she loves sugar bites. Are you still on about your wife? I, I don't care about your wife. Shut up. Just, just tell me about that. Just get back to the government job you mentioned, please. I feel bad for your ugly daughter. <laughs> tell me about the job. I'm sorry for your daughter's disastrous eating habits. Cause you, yeah, uh, uh, let's go for both. Let's do uh, both here. Tell me about the job. And I think my wife... I don't care, Steve. Shut up. Just tell me about the job. Are you willing to tell me about the job? You mentioned the job. Tell me about the job. Certified mechanic, you can apply for that government job in local alumni. Oh, walk away. Walk away from Steve. I cannot listen to this. I don't care. All right, good. I like the script. The script's got some work into it. Now, the other really exciting thing about this game, by the way, is... Well, you said go down. I don't want to go down. I'm going to go... Is that down? No, that's up. Go for up. Go for up. We'll go up and see what's going on in upper machina. This is all quite good. A pneumatic press. Hello. What does this thing do? It's off like the rest of the factory. Okay. Yeah, the other thing I really like about this game, by the way, is what they're rather fancily calling retroactive causality. Retroactive causality basically means this game is played in the wrong order. Like, my understanding is this chapter that's going to be the first chapter of the game, though whether this will actually be the first chapter of the finished game, I don't know, this is just a demo. The first chapter you play will be chapter 4, chronologically, meaning that the choices that you make in chapter 4 don't just affect what goes on to happen in chapter 5, whenever that actually shows up in the order of things, but then when you go back to play chapters that are chronologically earlier, your past is retroactively changed by your present. So if you, like, do something that's really dickish in, like, a chapter, then in the previous chapter, your past will be changed to explain why you became a dick. Which is actually really quite clever. And retroactive causality is a very fancy way of uh, throwing it. But I quite like that. There are consequences in the past. A past you haven't seen yet gets changed by how you act. And suddenly we're into an office. Hello. So, oh, this is Mr. Tywinson. The guy who's uh, in the factory. I have no idea who that is. I can only see his silhouette. But he's definitely too tall to be Mr. Tywinson. Okay, better not. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, why am I in here? Ooh, files. Files full of lies. Not into administration, can't do anything there. There's a clock, 5 to 12. Certificate, some official document. Tywinson must be proud of it. A fake plant. Fake, I'd love to take it, but it won't fit in my bag. Marvellous. Can I take the... I don't need to be certified. What else have we got? Pile of business books. And old school paradigm shifts. Paper wrap bottle. Can we take this? There's a little card attached to it that says, let's seal the deal. Interesting. Let's seal the deal. In a paper-wrapped bottle, was he bribed with something as simple as alcohol? I don't know. Okay. One chair, and that's... Oh, this is where Tywinson's personal system would normally sit. I'm not white-collar enough for sitting. Excellent. And a very modern design. Better leave it for now. And a pile of ledgers filled with numbers. Anything we can do with them? I'm not touching them. The debt might pass to me. Anything in the trash can? It's full of non-incriminating documents. No thanks. I have to watch my encumbrance level. <laughs> okay, so this game's got a real sense of humour to it. I like that. That's good. Alright, so nothing in the office here. What was that pneumatic machine I saw? Am I going... Okay, I wish it could take me all the way up to Deus, but it can't. It can only take me a little far. So, nothing on this floor. Let's go to ask to see if either of those guys know about that machine I just saw up on the second floor there. Hello. Ah, you used to work with that hammer press upstairs, right? So what can you tell me about that? And it runs on compressed air. 
machina, not on gas, compressed air. But nonetheless, they took my job! So the hammer press upstairs should still be operational. Okay, of course it is. But to run it, you need the key. Could I have the key? I will have to steal it from Mr. Tarrington's evil accountant. Is there some sort of quest to retrieve this key? The key is just a metaphor from it. <laughs> I like this game already. It's It's got good writing. Uh, is there some sort of quest to retrieve the key by any chance? Uh, you have this key, do you? I do. Could I have the key? And it is not yours, safe by unhappy chance. It could have been mine. Give me the key, Steve. Uh, if you would but lend me the key. Sure thing, here it is. Hey, thanks. Okay, so now I've got a key. No, I don't... I, I don't... Key. <laughs> okay, yeah, they're, they're, they're fully in on the South Park joke. Okay, perfect. Right, up we go. We've now got a key that uses that machine. Up, up, up we go. So, presumably, the things I'm saying to Steve and the way I treated that girl could theoretically retroactively impact how my character grew up. So, key and machine. Now we can turn on the machine. And this started the press. So, what can I do with said press? It's just, yes, a pneumatic press. Okay, go! So, I've got a pneumatic press right now. But, I feel like I need to find something to crush with it. Like, until I've got something to press with it, then there's nothing I can do with this. Or, I could just take day-to-day -day items, put them in the pneumatic press, film it, upload it to YouTube, and become vastly more popular than I currently am. That could work. Let's go down. I feel like I've done all the floors except the bottom one. Let's head down for a bit. Down, back to here. And down again. And is there even more down? There is more down, but what is Sweeney's? He was the best barber and columni. Hands down. Is there anything this side? What's this over here? Ooh, a coin slot. There is a flattened bottle cap in the coin slot. Well, somebody got confused about what was the currency then, didn't they? Someone must have tried to use it instead of a coin. It's like this game is deliberately making references to things I like. This is weird. And now I've got myself a flattened co... Flattened, wait, koala? Flattened koala cola bottle cap. Beautiful. Excellent. So I've taken that out of the slot. So now if I could find an actual coin, I could put a coin into the slot here. But there's nothing inside. The machine still doesn't seem to work, though. Probably broken for good. Anything else I could do with there? No, I've just taken that out of there. Fine. And what is Sweeney's? A barber, they said, but a lock. They somehow connected Sweeney with a series of... <laughs> of course they did. Oh, a barber called Sweeney, John. A barber, Sweeney. Goodness sake, never mind. Yes, of course, Sweeney Todd. Uh, yes, I like the sense of humour. Right, down again. Seems like there's nothing more here. So I've got two items here. And here we are at the last cup of grog. Let's go in and have a nice drink in the bar. In we go. And again, it's all very Bioshock with the flipping, uh, the kind of the record player quality music. Though I also like the real, the sound mixing. You step outside, and you've got the very faint echo of the music from inside the building. But you hear the chanting, but you step inside the building... And all of a sudden, the music becomes a lot louder as you step through the door. And the crowd is almost entirely blurred out. It's really good. Excellent. So, toilet. Toilet for real gentlemen. I'm fine, thanks. One vending machine. And there's only one bag of sugar bites. If I could get one bag of sugar bites, I could give it to Steve. And Steve might give me something. Okay. Yep, I'd need a coin to make it work. Ooh, ooh. Use the, use the flattened koala cola thing. Okay, it's of the same size of a coin. It fits perfectly. Yep, but it's not nearly as heavy as one. Ah. Okay, problem. Who's this? Hello, customer. Regular customer enjoying his empty glass. And what's your deal then? Hello there. Hello. Uh, got any spare change by any chance? Got any spare change needed for the vending machine? Not a single coin. I left the last one in that tip jar. Not that I need it for anything now that they don't serve Columna Libra anymore. Presumably that is a drink of some description, and any reason they don't serve that in particular? I only drink Columna Libra, and they sold the last bottle of Deus Rum to the president of the Labour Union. Can you imagine it? He took the whole bottle. Okay, and what do those two things have to do with each other exactly? Everything! So Columna Libra is a cocktail made from Deus Rum and Koala Cola. Okay, but sometimes they put extra stuff in it. 
but these are not important. Except spoon. You should always ask for a spoon. I even keep one in my empty glass here. See? Can... Can I have the spoon, please? I might be able to flatten it for some reason. It's stylish and extremely useful. Useful for measuring a spoonful of sugar. I'm not sure a knife would seem like a more useful... <laughs> now are you just deliberately making jokes about The Simpsons and the knifey spoony game in the Australian episode? Because at this point, I think this game was basically engineered to reference things I like. And, yeah, what's it useful for exactly? Well, law enforcement of the Democratic Republic has provided their officers with a number of rules for quick profiling. One of them is the empty glass rule. If someone is sitting in a bar with an empty glass, he's about to cause some trouble, it says. Even more so if it's a group of people. Okay, and that's why you drink alone? Indeed, there is some truth in it. I mean, if you're sitting in a bar but not drinking, you're probably broke, unemployed, not married, or crazy. And people like that are exactly the ones usually leading or joining a protest, cult, or revolution. And what does this have to do with a spoon, my good man? As you may know, police officers are very strict in following the rules, even when they don't understand them at all. I will use this fact against them, because if they come, I will claim the glass is not empty because there is a spoon inside it. Brilliant, right? You, sir, are a bloody genius. You are absolute genius. You are aware they will beat you bloody for making fun of them, mind. I knew you would agree. Can I borrow the spoon, please? Sorry, I need it. My glass would be empty without it, and you never know when the police could arrive. If I had something else in my glass, though, it wouldn't be a problem. Any small object would do, potentially? Yeah, if I could give you the koala cola thing, that could potentially work. It would not be appropriate to do so. It would offend the bartender. How about if I get you another drink? Would that be nice? Thank you, but no. I only drink Columba Libra, and they sell the last bottle of Deus Rum to the present of the... Okay, so... We know about that already, fine. So, if I could just get the Koala Cola and the Deus Rum, I could actually get him a fresh drink. Then I could have his spoon, and that would theoretically be useful for something because it's an adventure game, and that's how they work. Now, straight on in that case. Through to the phonograph. I hate this song. I can't reach it. Oh, it's behind the bar. So, the tip jar, there's one coin inside. And they don't tip as they used to. Could I have the coin? Please don't touch that. Could I speak to you about this? He seems like he knows what he's doing. So, welcome to the last cup of grog, the most talked about bar in the Democratic Republic. And intrigued, what makes this bar so special? You can tell it's a loved bar, just looking at your tip jar. <laughs> oh dear, yes, just let's make fun of him, why not? You have an intricate sense of humour, sir, but feel free to contribute. Any amount is welcome. Donations at your discretion. Okay. And unfortunately, there is only one coin inside, my good man. Rest assured, it can hold many more coins. <laughs> okay, got any promo samples by any flipping chance? Go on, got any freebies? Certainly, this free sample of zigzag chewing gum. I'm supposed to read you this text. Ahem. How does zigzag chewing gum steady your nerves? It's a soothing outlet for nervousness. It's a refreshing, pleasant pastime that improves teeth, breath, appetite, digestion. Carry this inexpensive pleasure in your pocket. It's always ready to chew and to benefit you to take away the effects of over-smoking and overeating. It's as good for you as sunshine. Buy it by the box. Chew it after every meal. Here is your free sample. Enjoy. Thank you. I really hope I actually just got some free chewing gum there. That would be useful. So, do we have anything else? Yeah, change the song if you'd be so kind. Could you do that, please? Nope, the phonograph is in auto-mix mode. No. Oh. So, let's see if we can get a nice ice-cold koala cola from this guy. Unfortunately, this establishment lacks a license to serve non-alcoholic drinks. <laughs> oh, good. You can get koala cola as an ingredient in a number of the cocktails we serve, though. Just name it. Yeah, I know that. I wouldn't mind getting a Columna Libra to give to that guy so I can get hold of his spoon, potentially. But I'm guessing you don't have any of the ingredients. Okay, I do indeed have chewing gum. So potentially what I need to do is get... Yeah, I need to get... Well, I need to get a coin for this vending machine. Can I just take this spoon? Would he just notice if I just took the spoon? Can I just... No, no, I, I just want to have the spoon. Tried showing the inventory to the girl, but interestingly, if you show her the, um, the bottle cap... Why are you showing me random pieces of trash? I don't know, it's an adventure game, it's how we play them. We just literally shove everything in my inventory in your face until one of them gets a positive reaction. Ooh, I may have just found a solution. I just ate the chewing gum myself. And as a result of that, I've never tasted something this sweet before. I've turned the chewing gum into chewed gum. Now, can I combine that with a yes, almost, com wait, almost completed fake coin. Is that good enough? 
it's too sticky on one side, it would certainly get stuck inside. Darn, I need one more bottle cap. I just need to get a bottle cap from somewhere. You, someone give me a bottle cap. If I could persuade him to change the machine, the song of the machine, he might turn his back on me long enough for me to take the coin. I'm offended by this song. Why? Um, because uh, I prefer the extended version. Uh, me too, that's why it's on repeat. Very clever. And now I'm trying to argue the political problems of this song I haven't been listening to. It's thinly veiled propaganda against our legitimate aspiration to find a way into Deus, you fool. Oh, 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 he's gone down. Yes, yes, yes. Pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it. How do I... Uh, it's tightly shut. I can't open it with my bare hands. Well, how do I... How do I do a thing? Okay, he's... Uh, he ordered a drink and he's gone down under there. Drug dispensing device. Yeah. Sir, please don't play with the tip jar. Darn it, I was just looking. Okay. Uh, was I? Darn it. I need to find something to Jimmy open the tip jar with. Then I could get a coin... Then I'd have a complete one. Alright, never mind. Never mind. No, walk away, walk away. So, how to get a coin? Either I need something to jimmy open that tip jar, okay? Or I need another bottle cap, because if I could just get one more bottle cap, I could complete my fake coin. Ah, because I've learned some more information from Steve, I've actually unlocked new dialogue options with her. So now I no longer have to, like, be really nasty to her and say that he lost the job because of useless parasites like her. Instead, now I can just say that, you know, that she's a low salary, blue collar pneumatic press worker now unemployed. Or a guy whose wife's going to divorce him if the process doesn't succeed. Let's go for the, let's go for the salary and class based one. See if she responds to that. People like him are exactly the reason why we need to act now. Common people just don't get it, so we have to help. That's a bit smug and superior of you over there, Captain Shadow. Help them get the rhyme right, and revolution won't help them. Common people will always be exploited by the ruling class. Can I join you by any chance? Um, it's kind of a secret club. I'll have to check. And understandable, call me maybe. Aha, that wrapped bottle. We could unwrap it. Okay, now we know that it's Deus Rum. We've got the ha 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 ha. Okay, so the bottle upstairs in the office, there was the wrapped bottle. And that once we learnt about the Deus Rum downstairs, we were allowed to come upstairs and grab that bottle now. Beautiful. Now, can we open it? Potentially. Oh. Usually drink this one is literally made from sugar. Okay, what if I go and hand that over and my only condition is I get to keep the bottle cap, then I'll have a complete fake coin. Marvellous. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Now, who's the right person to hand this over to? How about you? Would you like the Deus Rum? And indeed, if I speak to the customer, I took the, uh, the Deus Rum back from him. Would you like a little bit by any chance? Thanks, I don't drink it on its own. You give it to the bartender and mix me a glass of Columna Libra, though. All right, hello there. You, I think we are in good shape right now. There we go. So we've donated that to him. One Columna Libra on its way. So he just makes that for me because he provides the koala cola I need. That gives me the bottle cap. Okay, got myself one extra bottle cap and a Columna Libra. Perfect. One Columna Libra. Where did the bottle cap go? I saw it. There it was. Got it. Now, mix that. And I've got a good idea. I need to... Oh, I need to flatten that one too. Okay. Okay, good. We've got a plan. We've totally got a plan. One glass of Columna Libra. Hand that over to this guy. You, my good man. Can I have a Columna Libra? Got this for you. Can I have your spoon, please? Sure thing. I have another glass now, but it's not empty yet. Perfect. I've now got a spoon. I have no idea what... <gasps> Wait. Hang on. Hang on. Could I use the spoon to get the coin out of the tip jar? You, I'd like to order a some form of thing that'll make you go under the bar, please. And let's see if I can use that spoon to get this. So you, thing, maybe I can open this with a spoon. Ah, success, I'll borrow this coin. Yes, I've got an actual coin. Okay, I wonder if that's two separate solutions to the same puzzle, because now I've got one almost complete fake coin, and one basically real coin. So that's good. I've now got a coin. Let's go flatten that other koala cola bottle cap. So up to the press. Bottle cap goes in press. Time to flatten this bottle cap. So the bottle cap's in place. Use the key to turn on the machine. Flatten that. Get myself one bottle cap back. Combine that with this. And I now have a coin and a perfect fake coin. Perfect. I don't know why I need both of them. But all right, I wonder if that is in fact just literally two solutions to the same problem. Because 
I only think I need one coin, so I may as well use the... I'll try using the fake one first, see if the fake one actually works. So through here, fake coin in here, and... Nice, got myself the thing that Steve's daughter was craving. Take the bag of sugar bites, yep. And now is there anything else actually in here? It is indeed empty. Right, Steve, 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 I've got good news for you, man. I've got really good news for you. I've got sugar bites for your daughter. Here you go. This should make you open up a little bit. I just happen to have a whole bag of sugar bites right here. Take it. Well, thanks, man. My daughter loves them. Now, let's talk about that government job. Now you're no longer obsessed with your daughter, please. I don't know much about it, really. I just found this flyer mentioning it. Here, take it. Thanks, Steve. Beautiful. So, we've got this uh, flyer. Government job ad. Skillful mechanic. Yep, that's me. I should apply with my diploma, two photos, and a recommendation from my previous employer. There's no way I could find all those. I hate administration almost as much as I hate sugar and text-heavy adventure games. Ah, <laughs> uh, good thing this demo is only this long. You'll probably just get frustrated doing diploma-finding puzzles. <laughs> and you don't even want to know all the possible ways to persuade Mr. Tomlinson to write me a recommendation. <laughs> Alright. Fair enough. I said you don't want to know. Anyway, thanks for playing. It's over. Or would you just like to make me wander around some more and click at random stuff? You know, explore a little bit. Nerd. Excellent. <laughs> so, okay. That is apparently the demo for Columni. And can I just say that this looks really, really, really damn good. It feels kind of New Vegasy to me. Because that, like, ultimately, the puzzle was to get Steve the sugar bites. The sugar bites came out of the vending machine, but there were two separate solutions to that. I could either, like, get the chewing gum and the bottle cap and the other bottle cap, flatten it to create a fake coin, and that worked fine. Or I could go and steal the Deus rum, get the bartender to mix me up a Columba Libra in order to get hold of the spoon to jimmy open the jar to get the real coin that I could also have used in the vending machine. So two separate solutions, a ton of different like dialogue options, more dialogue options becoming available as you actually kind of speak to characters, it opens up new dialogue options with other characters and that opens up new opportunities and the whole thing's got a sense of humour to it and it's really, really, really damn pretty. It's utterly, utterly gorgeous. So this is the demo for Columni. I personally would quite like to see this one finished because this doesn't even like contain the retroactive causality stuff which is what makes it kind of interesting. This here was just a demo for a text adventure game it strikes me as a really damn good one. It's very pretty. It's very good fun. It's got a good sense of humour. I like it. As I say, I believe the day I put this video out, this should have like just started on Kickstarter. There will be a link in the description below. If this is your sort of bag, do feel free to go and give it a look. And assuming it does get successfully funded, I'm sure when the final version comes out, I will be certain to give it a look. Because this, this is really rather good as far as I'm concerned. So yes, Columni, Demo, thing, link, diddly diddly dee, and more of this sort of thing soon, I am sure. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Johnson, has been many a true nerd, and this has been the really rather gorgeous and enjoyable demo for Columni. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Oh, oh, cannibalism. Good, that's a useful thing. Good news, guys. Unless he rolls dreadfully, he should be safe, and that was a pretty dreadful roll. And now the ship doesn't explode. <laughs> Yay! Not explode, not explode, not explode. We're running out of dice again. Um, I wonder if there's any morphine left.